We appreciate you and the chamber sponsoring this event tonight so that we can update the public on everything we're doing. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, first of all, I do want to give, extend my greatest thanks to the Glendora community and um, our wonderful board of trustees who represent our community every day and help us make uh, an impact for our students, a positive impact for our students. Uh, I wanna quickly acknowledge our board president, Ms. Sandra Borg, Vice President Robin Merkley, um, our clerk, Dr. Rakshan Fernando, um, and members, um, Ms. Elizabeth Reuter and Mr. Corey Ellenson. Thank you all so much for your vision and um, your dedication to this district. Thank you. I also have to say how grateful I am to work in this incredible Glendora community. Um, it has been a challenge uh, since the pandemic, but an absolute joy. And I look forward to a long future working with this great community. And I thank you. Um, I also have to give my thanks to our incredible employees. We have 702 uh, amazing employees who have um, provided an outstanding education for our students all the way through, um, starting with distance learning and then moving in uh, back, phasing back into in-person instruction. Uh, we have, uh, as you can see, 365 certificated staff and 335 classified support staff. And I just have to give a shout out to our teachers, our support staff, our of wonderful administrators at both the site and the district for helping us get through this pandemic and be able to reopen our schools. And we are happy to be doing that soon. Um, I have to thank our wonderful parents, PTAs, our PTA council for all that they do um, day after day during this pandemic. They have been out in front of our schools helping to distribute materials um, and just all the other wonderful things they've done to support our students. I thank you. Um, also, I have to thank uh, the, our, our partners at the City of Glendora, the Glendora Chamber of Commerce, our City Council, um, and then of course our wonderful Glendora Education Foundation who has really come through for us to ensure that our students had the technology that they needed um, to be able to go uh, into distance learning and, and be able to thrive during this pandemic. Um, and then also the many, many philanthropic organizations that um, provide support to our district um, and particularly coming up in scholarship season. So thank you so much to all those organizations. Next. So just qu a quick demographic review of our district. Uh, we have a population of 7,116 students. And for those of you who ever want to know about our demographics, you can get all of this from the California Schools Dashboard. Um, we have a, a a population of socioeconomically disadvantaged students of 28.7%, students with disabilities, 14.8%, English learners, 5.4%, um, foster youth, 0.4%, and homeless youth, 0.2%. Um, I do suspect that this has increased and will increase for our latest upload of the dashboard later this year. Um, uh, we have done a lot of work to reach out and try to identify students who've been impacted by the pandemic. Um, we have a Hispanic population of 45.4 in our student population. Um, white students, 35.9. Asian, 9.6. Two or more races, 5.3. Filipino, 2.1. African American, 1.3%. American Indian, 0.2. And Pacific Islander, 1%. As you can see, a very, very diverse population in Glendora Unified School District. Next. We are very, very proud of our schools, as you can imagine. Um, I will, of course, give a shout out to our uh, wonderful schools tonight, um, beginning with our Williams Preschool Sprouts and Daycare Program. For those of you who don't know, they have been up and running pretty much every single day during the pandemic, providing daycare for our essential workers, including our own staff. Uh, throughout this pandemic. Um, hats off to Williams uh, Preschool and Sprouts and Daycare. Also, all the staff and students and um, 
our amazing side administrators at Cullen Elementary, Lafetra, Sellers, Stanton, and Sutherland, who have um, really worked so hard uh, to um, give our children the absolute attention and education they need during this pandemic. For those people who say we haven't been in school, we've been in school, we've been online and our teachers have done an outstanding job of providing um, education to our students when we have been in distance learning. Um, next. Um, also, shout out to our middle schools, Goddard and Sandberg Middle School, um, who uh, also have done incredible work throughout uh, providing supports for our, our students. Uh, many of you uh, may, may not know that uh, there were many um, uh, middle school students who participated in our teen center uh, that was held at Crowther. And another shout out and thank you to the city for partnering with us on Crowther to provide support for our middle school students that were there. And I think even a few high school students dropped in occasionally throughout this uh, time in virtual learning. Our high schools, Glendora High School and Whitcomb High School um, also. Um, and Whitcomb that has not just a continuation school but a thriving independent study program. Um, some of you may or may not know that this year we were very proud to open the Glendora Online Academy of Learning. We call it GOAL. We have a number of dedicated teachers teaching in GOAL, which is our virtual online academy. Um, uh, hats off to that staff that really got it together in a very short period of time to ensure that students who wanted to go online and work in an, a more independent study program online during the pandemic were able to do so. Um, so thank you uh, to everyone involved in GOAL. And then of course, our wonderful adult education program. Next. Um, so a reopening update. I think everybody is most interested in knowing uh, where we are with reopening our schools for in-person instruction. So first I wanna talk about where we've been. So as you know, during the summer, our schools, the state was put on lockdown and our schools were closed. Um, and so throughout the pandemic, we have very closely followed the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health guidelines and health orders um, that really have given us uh, really our marching orders in terms of what we were able to do uh, with bringing students back. Um, so while we were in the pur purple tier, every opportunity we got we, to bring students back, we took that opportunity. Um, of course, I mentioned our daycare, which remained open and um, had special licensing to be able to do so during the pandemic. Our small cohorts of intensive needs students who came back on October 18th, 2020, 2020. And then also um, our phased in return of our TK6 students that began on February 18th, uh, 2021 with TK and K really, again, just have to thank our many dedicated teachers who have been uh, ready and willing to come back to service as needed um, and, and really uh, help our students phase back into in-person instruction at every opportunity. I do thank you for that. Um, on March 15th, we, as you mostly know, we moved into the red tier. Um, uh, that same day, we were given red tier guidance uh, from the Lo Los Angeles Department of Public Health. Um, that guidance said we could bring back secondary schools and we were thrilled. And then less than a week later, or about a week later, we received our guidance from the California Department of Public Health, allowing us to provide three feet of social distancing in our classrooms, meaning that we were able to bring our students back in a non-hybrid full um, reopening situation because our, our classes, our students fit with three feet. Um, and really the entire time, for those of you who don't know, the real issue of bringing students back has been the social distancing requirement. And we had planned for a full hybrid, um, thinking that we would not be able to fit our students in and we would have to split between A and B cohorts. And we were absolutely um, thrilled that the recommendations according to the health department and which, which initi initi were initiated by the CDC, said that we could bring, um, have three feet and therefore we were able to bring our students back. So I know this has happened very quickly um, for our parents and our staff um, 
And I, of course, due to the fact that we've moved through tiers and have received guidance very, very quickly. Um, but as we've committed, the board and I have committed since day one that we would follow the health orders and that we would do everything we could to bring students back the very minute that we were able to bring them back. And so on April 12th, we will um, bring our students back five days a week for four hours a day um, in the morning um, to our schools. Our students are coming back and we could not be more thrilled with that. Our students at the end of the day will grab a grab and go lunch. Um, that is to prevent the mixing of cohorts that we cannot supervise during lunch on our campuses. Um, we will continue our Wellness Wednesday program, um, but it won't be just on Wednesdays. It'll be throughout the day on campus and also uh, in the afternoons when you get back home. Um, those activities will continue um, as well as tutorials for our students and all kinds of other ex uh, activities like clubs, which our students have really valued throughout the pandemic. Um, and then of course, our families may choose to stay in distance learning and we will continue to provide a remote learning environment for students whose families decide that that is what they wanna do. But um, nevertheless, we are thrilled to have our students back. And I'll tell you why, because as a lifelong educator, and I think everyone would agree with me and including the board, we know the best place for our students is in our classrooms. When our students are with us, they have access to a vast network of supports of in-person supports. They have teacher, their teachers, counselors, uh, our support staff, their administrators on campus and their peer network, which is also important for the socio-emotional health of our students. Um, so many more things available for our students when they're with us and we know it's best for them to be on campus. So we are thrilled to be able to bring them back for five days a week beginning April 12th. Next. I'm also very, very proud that Glendora Unified um, School District was approved as a LA County vaccination point of dispensing. Um, we applied and thanks to the hours and hours and hours of work uh, by our district uh, nurse, Sonia Delaquila and her team, uh, to date, we have administered 667 doses to our teachers, support staff, and also their eligible family members. Um, and we have nearly 600 more um, to administer in the upcoming week. So we're really, really proud of our ability to provide vaccinations for our staffs. Um, and then we will be available for other eligible groups in the community, including our own 16 and above students uh, here in the ne next few weeks. I'm sure you all heard that April 15th will be open for six students 16 and above and we'll be there and open and ready to provide them with their vaccinations as well, cross our fingers. Um, also, uh, we are very happy to have, a, have partnered with Dr. Ravi and his Little Stars Clinic uh, for our COVID testing. Um, and they both come to our district office and do testing every Wednesday. Um, but our, our students and staff can go to his office, his clinic at any time and get COVID tested free of charge um, to ensure that our, our staff and our students are safe, particularly as we are returning back to school. Um, we, we've been really thrilled with that. And then also uh, incredibly, uh, Dr. Ravi and his staff have been able to come out to Glendora High School and test our returning athletes as they return to competition, which has made all the difference. Um, before we got to red tier, they were required to be tested and there he was with his clinic and it was an amazing effort. So thank you so much, Dr. Robbie and your entire staff. Next. Looking forward, I sure am looking forward to moving on out of this pandemic, getting back to normalcy. Um, and ensuring that we are able to go back to all the amazing, amazing traditions that Glendora has to offer. One of those tra traditions happens to be our graduation ceremony, uh, ceremonies at our high schools. And I have to tell you, I am so pleased to announce that we will have in-person ceremonies this year. Now, 
they will likely be in multiple sessions because we will have limitations to the percentage of folks who can be in the audience. Um, and we will still have social distancing on the field, um, but we will be in person location to be announced on June 9th, 2021. So very happy, very excited to announce that. Uh, also looking forward to a robust summer school session. Um, we will have two sessions this year. We will be in person. Um, we will likely have a few credit recovery courses that are offered online through our credit recovery program for seniors who need to catch up. Um, but for the most part, our summer school will be in person. And really the thought is uh, for some students they, who really struggled uh, being remote during the pandemic, um, providing a remote um, summer school would probably not help them uh, with learning loss. And so we will be offering two summer school sessions, June 10th through 25th, uh, June 28th, through July 14th, and then possibly even a third one for Glendora High School. Um, we are also trying to work on putting together some one week STEM and arts fun and learning sessions during the summer. Uh, we also call them passion projects for our teachers, hoping we can get some teachers to come out and do fun arts projects for a week at a time, maybe guitar lessons, maybe build rockets. Uh, or robots um, and uh, so that students are really having fun as they learn throughout the summer. So really proud of that work we're working on right now. And then I'm, I'm also pleased to announce that the first day of the 21-22 school year will be August 25th this year. And we are looking forward to that being uh, fully in person. Um, of course, of course, we have to plan for all possible scenarios. As we know, there could be other surges um, crossing fingers and toes that there are not, because I think we all have become very disciplined and are very safe. Um, so only good thoughts going towards starting um, in traditional education in the beginning of the school year next year, while planning for the others, just in case. Next. So I also wanted to let everybody know that even during the pandemic, even though our priority was everything related to COVID and, and to providing the very best educational program we could during the pandemic. We also have district overarching goals we also, that we call LCAP goals that we've been working on this entire time. And so I wanted to just briefly review those with all of you and let you know that we have been working on these and we will continue to work on these um, throughout the school year and they will continue on through next year. Of course, we're going through the LCAP stakeholder process as we speak, and uh, you'll be uh, invited to uh, attend meetings to give us input into um, how to revise our goals, or are, are there other goals we'd like to add? Um, are there goals we feel are maybe um, are obsolete and we, we should remove them? So we're, we, uh, we really do um, appreciate the input of our community and you'll be getting information about those stakeholder meetings very soon. But just to review some of those goals, the first one being student achievement through college and career readiness. Um, this is a really important goal. This really guides the work. The work of the district is to ensure that every child is able to um, reach his or her own greatest potential upon leaving our schools and be set up for the week following graduation. Um, everything actually starts, our work actually starts after graduation in, in ensuring that students are prepared for that and prepared for their lives as productive thriving, thriving adults who are on a path to career and college. So uh, that is our work and that is a TK-12, PK-12 uh, proposition. It's, um, so, Part of that work is to expand our CTE pathways. We've already begun that partnership and that good work with Citrus College. Many thanks to Dr. Perry and her staff who have just uh, welcomed um, our desire to expand with open arms. So thank you so much. Uh, increasing vocational opportunities and dual enrollment. Uh, we are by no means under any impression that every single student needs a four-year degree. I think every single child needs to go on to college or career that leads to gainful employment, doing what they love and what they're interested in. Not every career you love 
requires four years of college, but we want to support our students in whatever it is they want to do. So that may include uh, providing um, industry certifications, pathways to Citrus College for those wonderful associate's degrees, associate's degrees to transfer, uh, you name it. We want to provide every possible opportunity for our students. And that's a lot of work. And um, so it's already starting. We're really thrilled. Um, also, in order for students to be successful, we need multi-tiered systems of support to address learning loss, supports for students with disabilities, and English learners, really important. Um, providing a comprehensive de professional development opportunities for teachers, uh, which support best practice for 21st century learning. I know we're pretty far into the 21st century now, but we really do, um, that's probably the point. It, the the, the um, skills our students need and the careers of the future continuously evolve. And we wanna be able to keep our students current and looking towards the future. And then also promoting internal leadership development. I'm very thrilled to announce that we have reactivated the Glendora Aspiring Administrators Academy, which we have almost 40 uh, employees, both certificated and classified participating so that we are able to really um, enhance our leadership throughout the district and hopefully grow our own for the future. Next. Next goal, safe and healthy 21st century learning environments. Um, providing social emotional learning will be even more important now that we come back um, from um, distance learning and we are working on a comprehensive mental health supports. We added a lot of mental health supports, many thanks to our wonderful wellness coordinator, Lucia Fernandez and all of our amazing counselors throughout the district and our mental health partners. Uh, we will continue to uh, expand and enhance those for when students come back, understanding that it will be needed. Um, we also need to conduct and implement a facilities needs assessment and facilities improvement plan, ensure uh, sustainable technology infrastructure for 21st century learning. Uh, when you have to bring all of your students and teachers and they all have to be online and have laptops and Chromebooks, you also have to make sure the infrastructure is there that there's wireless access points and plenty of bandwidth. And we need to make sure we continue to sustain that and maintain it um, for our students. And then of course, ensuring that all of our site and district safety plans and protocols are implemented and updated with most current practice and safety measures. Next. This is a big one. This is one that has come up over and over again is our community really wants um, us to have a goal around community engagement and collaboration, communication, really important. And what we've learned through the pandemic is that we can't give enough information. And I have to tell you, it was a bit like uh, drinking water from a fire hose at times. The information was coming so fast and so much and changing so often. It was almost, it's almost at times hard to keep up with. Um, but I'm so happy to have, uh, be able to have um, the support of our new director of community communications, community uh, engagement and partnership development to really help us focus on this top priority um, that our parents and our community have mentioned over and over again that they wanted uh, really excited about uh, Ms. Thrower's work in that area. Um, and she's actually on tonight running my slides for me. Thank you, Alexis. Um, we also want to provide multiple opportunities for stakeholder input through a comprehensive community engagement plan, um, provide collaboration with our employee groups and support to support our teachers, administrators, and support staff. We are very fortunate to have very collaborative relationships with both the Glendora, Glendora Teachers Association and the California School Employees Association. And thank you to those groups so much for all your hard work during this pandemic. It has been something else. Um, and then also uh, really happy at, to be working to engage with our higher education partners. I mentioned Citrus College, also many of the universities um, and business community and philanthrop philanthropic partners to increase um, not just uh, the benefit to our students, but also opportunities for them for their future career paths. We would love to develop a system of apprenticeships and internships in our local community businesses. 
So really exciting stuff we're working on there. Next. And then lastly, but certainly not leastly, um, fiscal solvency. Glendora Unified School District has a budget of $78 million. Um, we did receive CARES money, uh, CARES Act monies uh, this year and um, for next year, which will ensure that we're able to provide all of the supports needed for the pandemic. Things like buying uh, individual size desks and tables, PPE, uh, equipment, technological equipment, um, you name it, everything under the sun to ensure we can bring our kids back. Those funds are very, very restricted. Um, we uh, also want to analyze, implement uh, strict internal checks and balances, align our fiscal resources to our district goals and priorities and through that stakeholder input, um, explore and, and secure grant funding to increase revenue. Uh, this year, our staff, our incredible staff, has uh, written for um, multiple grants, and we have received many, uh, to totaling $1.65 million. So that's an increase in revenue. I'm so proud of our staff for taking the initiative to write those grants for our district, because as you know, we don't receive the supplemental and concentration grants of, of districts that have a higher rate of poverty. Um, so being able to supplement our revenue whenever possible is critical. So really happy about that. Uh, we're going to work on ensuring facilities maintenance and improvement, including our fields and athletic facilities. Much of this in partnership with um, the city of Glendora. We're working on an MOU right now to, to really help improve the uh, availability of our fields and athletic facilities for our community. And then also, I think this is really important, and this is um, addressed the long term several years now. I think over seven years, we've had declining enrollment uh, in Glendora uh, Unified School District um, for different reasons. One of them is just a declining birth rate in the community. Uh, others, you know, there's uh, online schools are very popular now, um, but we are addressing that through attrition, uh, meaning that. Um, as people retire or leave the district, we try to be very disciplined with not replacing if, if at all possible um, because we are under enrolled at this, at, at this date. And then also uh, innovative programming and hoping, not hope, hope is not a strategy, but planning uh, to, do, to open some innovative programs in our district. Namely, I think we're going to be working very closely on a dual language immersion school, and also potentially at a later date, a STEM academy. So all of those things are exciting things that hopefully will bring students to Glendora Unified School District because uh, we are proud of our schools. And we know that when students come to our schools, they get an absolutely outstanding education.